Right, it's uh, been a little while, but I'm back doing more tutorials. Only probably just the one, because people have been bugging me about it and tutorials are difficult, and my microphone isn't working very well, and it may even catch fire as I'm doing this one, which will be very funny for you, uh, the listener. Probably. Um, tutorials. People have been asking me to do a shading tutorial since I said I would do a shading tutorial in my last tutorial, which was block colours, which I never got round to doing. Um, sorry about that. Um, one thing, I don't do airbrush shading, I'm not very good at it, so if you want to do something like a painting, like you would on re with real paint, I'm not your guy, I don't do that, I don't, I don't do it. But if you want to do cell shading, like with a comic, I'm your guy. I can do it. Right, so, this is a page of Jaden Crusader, this here. Uh, Jaden Crusader, it's going to be coming up in a day, I think. <laughs> I'm running a bit behind schedule. Um, but uh, this is going to be the base for uh, telling us, uh, uh, teaching you, you guys how to shade. Um, okay, I've got to the block colour stage, and I've filled in all the gaps, and it's, and it's ready to colour. Uh, shade shade. Um, now, the number of colours you want to use for shading, with cell shading, depends on how reflective something is. If you're doing something like clothing, like cotton, you only want one sort of shade colour, and maybe one highlight colour, usually just the shade colour, because clothing isn't very reflective. Um, skin, that ha usually has one shade colour, or maybe one shade colour, one highlight as well. Um, hair, very, very reflective. Very, very shiny. You want to have lots and lots of colours in that to get the full spectrum. And plastics, very shiny, big spectrum of highlight and shade. Um, and if you want to get really good contrast, you want to have very thin strips of very bright colour, and, and lots and lots of darks to get really big, deep shadows, and that makes things very dramatic. But this is just shading in your everyday use, like with you know, a Jaden Crusader comic. Um, so this is, as you can see, done with blocks. If we go to our colour layer, which is what I'm doing here, um, sorry these aren't labelled, I've got out of the habit of labelling them, uh, as you will probably do as you become more and more good at u using Photoshop. Um, go to the colour layer, then select the magic wand tool, um, and uncheck this box called contig contigu... contigu... This is another word I can't say. This box that says something along the lines of contiguous, and um, that means that when you select, say, Crusader's red shirt, all of the red in this page is, of that colour is selected, uh, because the tolerance is set to zero. If I set the tolerance to 255, um, everything would be selected. Uh, but I don't want that, I just want the red, so I'm going to put that back to zero. Um, and so all the all the red, which is Crusader shirt, is selected. Now you want to uh, right click on that. Um, I'm using stylus, which you should be using, because if you're using a mouse, it won't work. It doesn't work. Stop asking me how you do it with a mouse. I can't help you. Um, right click with your mouse. In which case, for me, that is um, one of the buttons on it. Some people it's double tap, and you want to uh, select from this menu that comes up layer via copy. This puts all of the stuff onto a new layer above your colour layer. Now, you then want to go to up here to your layers window and hit the little checkerboard thing under lock so that a little padlock comes up here. What this means is that while we can still edit the layer, we can't, uh, so if I zoom in, you can draw all over it, but you can't draw um, anywhere that's transparent. I'll just get rid of that, because we don't obviously want that. Um, that means that you don't go over when you're shading. It's mainly for security, because I'm dyspraxic, I find it very hard to stay within the lines, um, but it also makes it look neater. Now, I've created a little palette here, um, just for the use in this. Uh, you can use whatever colours you think are right. For instance, for Crusader shirt, you want a dark colour, contrast with it. So you just pick, go to Color Picker, that's uh, clicking on this, and you can go down in brightness or up in brightness, or change the saturation to be very pale, very dark, whatever. Uh, but I've already created a color I want, and it's this one here, this red. 
and if I show you how that works we zoom in and we paint just directly onto it where shadows would go well, that's fairly obvious isn't it um, and you know you do that until the whole place is done with uh, shading I'll just finish this it will only take five seconds and then I'll move on to hairs uh, as a demonstration of something that's very reflective because they are slightly more complicated uh, not much though. not much um, yes that's that so we're then going to go down to color layers again because this is finished shading that bit and select the hair and layer via copy. Usually, if I was doing this uh, f not for a tutorial, I would have gone and done the other shirt at the same time, because it, it streamlines things. But I'm doing a tutorial, because I like you guys. I want to help you guys. And I want you to shut up about telling me to do a shading tutorial. So I'm doing a shading tutorial, so shut up. Um, yes, hair. I'm going to lock this layer again. Remember, lock it, otherwise you uh, tend to go over the lines. And I've got this thing set up, so I get uh, colors. Now, you want to have for hair in normal light conditions, you want to have two colors that are darker and three colors that are lighter. In some cases you just want to go up in brightness, but in some cases you want to go up in brightness and slightly up in saturation as well. Just fiddle around to find what looks right. Um, and again with this you just paint on like you would if it was a pen and paper or you know, um, like uh, your paintbrush and you can get very quickly some nice um, shading -y stuff and then I'm switching to the other colour just using this thing to go to the other colour that I selected and uh, you can paint in deeper shadows always start with the one that's slightly less and work deeper in darkness and I tend to go with shadows first because highlights tend to be less defining than shadows, I find. Um, and you just just play around with what looks right. I mean, obviously your style isn't going to be the same as my style. I'm just trying to help um, get you used to Photoshop. And uh, yeah, you might you might decide that this way of doing things is stupid. I don't know. You might. I might get ten emails tomorrow saying you suck. Yeah, your tutorials are useless. Which, if they ha if you have a mouse, they are. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm not being very sort of careful per se, because when you zoom out to uh, what it will be when you shrink it down, you can see that that all blends together. You don't. It doesn't have to be because if you zoom in, you can see that it's quite sloppy but when you zoom out it doesn't look so sloppy and that's the that's the actual size it will be in the original version I'm running out of time so I'm gonna stop it there um, I'm stopping now